Hi, this is Meredith Lego, and I'm doing a series of, of videos on Ascension Science. The last few videos I've touched upon the concept of stages of Ascension, and much of the content that I've gotten has been in communication or uh, basically uh, not, not like a trans channel, but I'm connecting with a being called Ascended Master Hilarion, or there are some other beings that I've co connected with. But essentially, much of the content, if you go back through the whole video series, has come from him. And I encourage you to actually start at the very beginning because he taught me in very much like a building, uh, building up of knowledge, kind of like in a classroom where you really need to start with the first chapter to move to the next chapter. So I might touch upon concepts that have been covered in previous videos and have built up in terms of knowledge over time. Um, so in the last video, I started to transition from the concept of ascension and how that starts to impact the, the evolution of our bodies as we're starting to ascend. And I'm going to get into several more videos on the content, but a lot of the changes actually occur with the assistance of light. The last video got into exactly how that happens, and I highly encourage you to watch that. Within this particular video, I or this particular channeling session that I'm going to get in today, I asked Hilarion, how does the light body form? So essentially, if you think about the multiple layers of, um, you know, our, our, our bodies, there's certainly our physical body. We've talked and learned about the emotional body, the mental body, and the etheric body. But in addition to that, you've also got other bodies that are part of your kind of general electromagnetic field or your aura. And so that's essentially the light body. Now, in the last video, um, I did get into the concept of an experiment that was done by a Russian researcher named Dr. P Peter Garyayev. And he discovered something that's now termed the DNA phantom effect. But what he found out is that DNA essentially holds or has the potential to hold light and even if the physical matter is removed from that particular space and in this case they were experimenting with DNA in a double helix format so even when after they were shining light in a like structured light like laser light upon this DNA even when they removed the DNA from the space there was sort of a phantom remnant of uh, photons that were uh, basically sequenced as a double he, uh, DNA double helix remaining in the same space, and it actually stayed there for up to 30 days. What, that, that kind of might explain the concept of ghosts, actually. I'm sure there's other kind of, uh, you know, rationales for that, but you have to imagine that every time you're sitting down for a period of time, like if, if you have a chair that you're already sitting down, then there's going to be a remnant, like a light body remnant of you that stays there for a long period of time, even after your physical body has, has left. So that being said, um, again, I asked Hilarion, how does the light body form? And his answer is, you currently are a collection of light and sound in a vibrating rotational frequency. Light or photons are attracted to the vortex portals in your atomic DNA molecules. The photons cling into the DNA codes into your unified field, similar uh, to a black hole and very similar to the DNA fa uh, phantom effect. As your portals open, more light is absorbed and attracted. The spin rate of the electrons and the quantum particles dictate your dimensionality and ability for timeline shifting at will. Master the membranes and the zero point and you will master time. Eating food that absorbs light and has the DNA codes for photonic manipulation into energy further enables your ability to hold light and therefore frequency. Plants are high photoreceptors because of the chlorophyll. In essence, you start to transfer those abilities to your own physical cells and through the process require less and less physical substance material to maintain energy. You pull energy directly from source frequency. Even now, you notice the difference. And in this particular case, he's speaking to me directly. You don't need to consume as much food substance. You are hypercharged by half the sleep than before. 
So uh, again, that's kind of another great example of how in this particular case, he's talking about how essentially the DNA can start to sort of attract in photons and it starts to build up into, uh, you know, it actually clings to your DNA molecules, but then essentially uh, you have the ability over time to actually strengthen that light. Now what's really interesting, and I talked about this in the last video, is that DNA, or, or, or photons, excuse me, photons aren't just light, they actually are information. <laughs> and so when we talk about the idea of light and enlightenment, that really means wisdom because light can carry information codes. And as referenced in the last video, there were several experiment, experiments that the same uh, Russian researcher, Dr. Peter Garyayev, did profound research on in which he was able to heal or actually change the DNA coding of beings simply by transferring laser light frequency from one sort of series of DNA of one species to the DNA of another species in, in terms of eggs and embryos and, and cause the second species to actually grow in as the first species simply because he changed the DNA codes of the eggs. Um, he also did some wonderful healing experiments with rats um, by healing some almost on the verge of death rats and healing some of their organs. I think it was the liver in this particular case, simply by uh, shining light from healthy uh, livers into the unhealthy livers and causing a, a dramatic turnaround situation in the rats. Uh, so again, DNA can definitely, excuse me, photons can store information codes. And that's really important right now because we're in a situation where the sun is starting to go through some changes and is going is in the process of sort of giving off or we're we're basically in a in a place in our universe right now where we're being hit with more gamma rays and uh, more sort of light codes right now. So there, we're in a wave of sort of more massive evolution, and that can also explain where there's other jumps in evolution in the past that maybe haven't been explained quite as well historically by science. So that is some exciting stuff. Uh, the last thing obviously he talks about is food. And I think at this particular time, I was you know, seeing some eating or experiencing some eating habits changes on my own where I didn't feel like I wanted quite dense foods as I did before. And was being coming more and more attracted to plant-based diets, and he actually explains that <clears throat> that actually is very important because as you're eating more plant-based diets, especially uh, foods that have are very very like dark dark green type foods, you're actually consuming. Uh, foods that, that are the carriers of the closest source of light. Now, as you start to evolve more and more, you actually don't need food substance at all to survive. And in fact, um, I'm gonna go to an, another source that explains it pretty well, but uh, going back to a video that I've done in the past that talks about the difference between dimensions and densities, and it, it, you know, I'll get into this type, but but dimensions are sort of evolution or, yeah, evolution of consciousness. And density is the sort of evolution of physical matter. And in dimensions one through three, which we're just kind of moving out of, the density is very much a carbon-based biology physical matter form. Now, when you move from dimensions four through six, the density type, becomes more carbon and silica. So that starts to form into the equation. Still in a biological form, but you're beginning to change the DNA into a more of a, a silica format. When you get into dimensions seven through nine, you uh, release carbon and essentially become more of a silica-based biology. And as opposed to being physical matter, you become more etheric matter. And then when you move from dimensions 10 through 12, 
the biology actually becomes more of a crystalline liquid light based biology and this is considered pre-matter <clears throat> and then when you move from dimensions 13 through 15 you start you actually evolve to become a standing wave pattern of a uh, flame or fire body which is now moving into antimatter so that actually is the overall evolution of sort of the this as species sort of evolve that's what happens as a species but that's also what happens as an individuated consciousness so as you're incarnating into kind of down the path of evolution as an individual incarnated um, being the higher frequency that you have the more that you're able to move into body forms you know body avatar forms that might be at different density layers and so, you know, right now, most of us obviously are in a situation where it's carbon, but we're, we're very much beginning to have more silica drawn into our bodies. And in fact, in, I don't know if it was in this channel or the last channel, or the last video that I did, Hilarion referenced the fact that we've got some, some humans today who uh, actually have light, uh, light sparks that are being seen within their blood. Um, in the form of sort of liquid light plasma. And I'm going to get into that in the next video because I did ask Hilarion about that. So, so again, that happens with sil silica and then eventually you start to move into a more crystalline light body. So, you know, as you continue to evolve, your memory of your other lives slowly begins to improve. You know, I'm, I'm having more memory of some of my other lives within sort of my over over soul cluster and some of my past lives. Um, but essentially, uh, you have then the ability to move into come different avatar bodies that just are holding a different um, density type and different um, sort of DNA configuration. So those are some exciting things and all of this, all of this change, all of this sort of evolution of the body is really facilitated through light and the change that light can bring and photons can bring with the coding of the D, uh, the coding that has the ability to facilitate change within the DNA body. Uh, so exciting things. And um, I'll continue to move on with more content and future videos. But if you do like this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up. And if you resonate with the content, I encourage you to um, subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, have a great evening. Thanks. Bye.